Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us, and happy 4th of July to all of our viewers. God bless America, a country with still unparalleled levels of freedom of speech. And to prove the point, we've got a sharp roundtable to talk about the current political scene with us this morning. Please welcome our guests, Joanna Weiss, a freelance writer and former Boston Globe columnist, and political analyst and consultant, Charlie Manning. Charlie, Joanna, welcome. Thank hey, John, you. First, good let's start out by congratulating you for another Emmy Award in these days of fake news to have <laughs> someone get another award, another one for the shelf. Congrats to you. Bravo. That's great work. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Just goes to show even a blind squirrel finds an acorn <laughs> once in a while. But appreciate that. Let's, let's move on here. Um, back in, I guess it was late April when we did our 100 days of the Trump administration, we did a bunch of interviews with Trump supporters, and the one common complaint they had was the president's propensity for these inflammatory tweets. We all know the litany of what's happened since. One of his tweets led relatively directly to the appointment of the special counsel investigating the Russia stuff. And most recently, we have the cable TV news hosts being attacked in a tweet. Charlie, I want to start with you. Do you agree with what those Trump supporters said? A, that this is a problem. And B, if you were in the White House, what would you do to stop this? What I always try to tell, you know, people running for office and then once they get into office is don't ever let them see you sweat. Don't let them ever think, especially the media, that they're getting under your skin in any way. Why? Because that brings you down to that level. I mean, that show with those two hosts has said terrible things about Trump and his family, but he should never fall to them and let them get under his skin. It diminishes the stature of the politician right. in question. Use Twitter yeah. to get news out, information, you know, a lot of good stuff for him to talk about. In fact, this past week was a great week. He got a lot of good things done. And instead, it will be all overshadowed by this. Well, I Go don't ahead. know that Donald Trump would take your advice because I don't think he takes anyone's advice. And this is him. There's no reason anyone should be surprised at the nasty, misogynistic tweets that he put out this week, which are no different from the nasty, misogynist and racist things that he said over the course of the campaign. People either were appalled from the start or they accepted it, either because they accepted everything else around him or because they found that it was authentic. He doesn't talk like a politician. Most politicians on Twitter are guarded. They're cautious. They're careful. They understand that they need a certain dignity surrounding their office and their position. Donald Trump doesn't care, never has, never will. Would he lose something? Just to circle back to the point you were making, Charlie, would he lose something? If he stopped tweeting, I mean, obviously it helped him in his campaign. I, I, you would agree with it that, did. right? With his base, sure. It was cleverly a clever marketing tactic. Would it hurt him if he stopped? I don't think he should stop at all. I think okay. be, to be, for instance, look at the disastrous week CNN's had. They've had to fire people, retract stories, awful, really bad journalism. Use Twitter to point that out to your followers. You That's know, fine. I have no problem with that. Just don't. But the type of things get down that on he the said. Dirt. Yeah, don't don't go after a, a TV show that nobody watches and raise those people up. About a million people do, yeah. but that's yeah. not a lot. Well, yeah. And, and you scheme, know, yeah. CNN made mistakes. You know, the media does make mistakes. The media, though, generally is held accountable and accounts for those mistakes. Those firings happened because CNN said, ooh, we did something wrong. Trump, I have not seen an ounce of Just because they got caught. Well, you know, they, they, they acknowledged it. I mean, they, you know I the mean, rules of journalism. Would you have gone with a story like that with one source? I absolutely wouldn't have. And, yeah. and something yeah. broke down at CNN, for sure. But Donald and not the first has, time. has never been subject to that kind of accountability. I don't know that trashing CNN or other media outlets, no matter how deserved, I don't know how that improves my life as well, a voter. No, I think it's good for him to reach out to his, what is it, more than 30 million followers, because most folks are out there earning a living or getting into the summer days, the kids are getting out of school, everybody's busy, but they may take a minute every day to look at Donald Trump's tweets, so it is good for him to get that news out. Brief it's, comment and then we break. It's certainly his way of, sp of speaking to the public, but it also diminishes the office, and I think everybody feels that, and down the line, that's going to hurt democracy. All right, we will find out as the uh, coming months unfold. We'll take a short break and when we continue we'll shift our focus to local politics lots to talk about there so please stay with us 
Welcome back. We're talking with two shrewd political analysts, Charlie Manning and Joanna Weiss, this morning. New WBUR Mass Inc. poll came out last week, shows Governor Charlie Baker with a 64% approval rating. In this day and age, that's extraordinary. Just 15% disapproval. How's he doing it? And if you're the Massachusetts Democratic Party, what do you do? Well, if you're the Massachusetts Democratic Party, you don't do a whole lot. You, they're putting up a couple of candidates who are trying to say, that the best they can say about Charlie Baker is he doesn't have a huge vision. But you know what? Right. Charlie Baker's doing exactly what he said he would do and what people elected him to do. They which used is, to say that about Menino yeah, all yeah. the time. No vision, and in the meantime... You know, you get stewardship of state government. Right. You get someone who is clearly trying to get a handle on the finances, and you get someone who is, you know, clearly at work and doing things, you know, that, that, that feel productive and feel like they're moving the needle in a sensible way. That's what people want from state government. And very little, if any, drama, Charlie. Right. Yeah, it was interesting. We not only had the great Charlie Baker numbers this week in that poll, but also the mayor got really terrific numbers in his poll. People like him. They like He's up for election this year. So I was thinking through it, and where are the parallels? And with all the craziness we were just talking about in Washington, these guys seem solid. They go to work every day. They do their job. There's no drama. And I think people really like that. And it, in these crazy times, it makes people feel good to know that we have a mayor we can rely on and a governor we can rely on. Right, absence of a major scandal. You know, Marty Walsh has had their, you know, they're, they're the union guys. The, the, he's very fortunate that, that the, the trial of the union guys and on his Baker's campaign. had a couple of employees sure. uh, get caught doing funny business. But you know. pretty low-grade yeah. stuff and nothing, no, nothing crisis level. You know, the biggest crisis that Charlie Baker faced was that snowstorm probably in the very, very beginning of his right. term. He weathered it. The tea kind of got through and it looks like he's helping to try to get the tea under control. All right, well, I want to use our last minute to mention another local politician who's been prominent lately in the media. That's uh, Congressman Seth Moulton from the North Shore. After the Democrats lost that special election down in Florida, he was getting a lot of attention for tweeting, we need new a new vision, new agenda. I hopped on his website to learn more about what this new agenda might consist of, and there's nothing there but a bunch of sort of standard Democratic boilerplate. What's the deal with Seth Moulton? Charlie. You know, I got to know him a little bit because I did that first campaign when he ran against Richard Tessay. You worked for Tessay. Yeah, Tissé. I worked for Richard Tessay. Yeah. And he didn't really get into the issues at all. That It was all about his personality, his military background, all of that. Which is very which, impressive. Which, oh, sure. Were, were the uh, things that he really pressed. And I'll never forget Bar the great Barbara Anderson, we miss her all so much, saying, this is the next John Kerry. Keep your eye on this guy because yeah. she had seen him up on the North Shore. So he's an interesting political figure. He is. Well, and he is fearless. He is not afraid to go on TV, to go and speak to the press, to call out Donald Trump, to call out any kind of, to call out Nancy Pelosi. I mean, he, he's, not a, he's not afraid to sort of have that public profile for himself at a time when a lot of politicians are very cautious. And, you know, whether he gets, you know, a little backlash from the Democrats in Congress right now, from the, from the power Democrats and Pelosi's team is an Open question. Doesn't hurt him at all but standing up to the powers that certainly be Certainly not. Well, it certainly positions himself well with the voters. At some point, does he have to come up with a fresh idea or two, or is that irrelevant? <laughs> I think he should. I'd tell him to come up with some, some good ideas. Yeah. He votes with Pelosi 94% of the time. Right. So he's sort of, when you look at his voting record, it's very different than what he's saying out there. He's solid Democratic, image is everything. Hey, thank you both very much. Joanna, Charlie, really appreciate your insight. Thank you. Happy 4th. Same to you all and same to all of you. Have it, make it a happy and safe holiday weekend. Now I'm going to send it back over to my colleagues for more WBZ News.